Hi, everybody, and hello. I know it's late, but I wanted to hop on while I had time and uh, show a remake of this recipe holder that there were some questions on, and let me pop the picture up. But I do have to warn you, you're going to have to put up with my dogs because <laughs> of the noise. They, um, they're not used to me. Yeah, and Homer, of course, is being naughty. So I want to um, just pop a picture up here for those of that you were asked of you that were asking, and that way you can see what this looks like. So this is what um, it was, and I'm trying to get it. Um, they've changed everything. So for some reason, it's not letting me. Okay. Well, it's not going to let me. <laughs> so it was a recipe holder. Hi, Sandy. That looked like this. And it was done with Authentique. And I have redone it to show you. So I wanted to do this tonight. It does hold a folio or a recipe cards. And I had done it with the, the Christmas folio years ago. But what's happened is that group is now gone. And the videos that were there are no longer accessible. And this was not one that I did between Facebook and StreamLive. So that's why we're doing it. And I did post the measurements already. It's in the, in the beginning of this video. So I want to just put it together. I'm not going to. Um, hi, Cheryl. I'm not going to mat it or anything. I did kind of to double mat it so you could see the contrast. And some of you may remember this from Authentic. So let's go ahead. I'm going to give you the measurements again. So you want, like I said, I'm doing it different than the original. So you're getting an updated version too. You want two pieces of chipboard. They are six inches wide, eight and three quarter long. This is cute to put on your calendar at Christmas time. You have the Christmas recipes in there. You can do so many things with it. Put a folio in there. And then you need two pieces of chipboard. I've wrapped one so we won't be on super late. And they are one and a half inches wide by six inches long. And I'm trying to remember. I want to say it was Linda. That, then Linda Vandrell who asked about this. And so, Linda, if you happen to see this, I redid it for you. Okay. I did do some of the pre-wrapping so that we can move on, but I need to do this piece. I have covered my chipboard, so I'm going to take my 8 by 10 and 3 quarter inch piece of cardstock that we're going to wrap it with, and we're going to wrap it just like, hi, uh, Linda, I got a wonderful surprise in the mail today. Thank you. Thank you. It's so pretty. I can't wait. I need to take a picture of it. It's a beautiful acrylic witch's hat. It's a replica of Sally's, but she put my name on it. So I thought that was super nice, Linda, of you to use Sally's hat for the remake. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Okay, so just go ahead and cover both pieces. Just like we do our album covers. And we're going to go ahead and burnish those edges and glue everything down. Hi, Tanya. So I'm so happy you joined us. And I am moving a little fast. So I don't keep us all up so late. I've been at the store all day. And we had to get that Halloween down. We got winter up. Okay, let's just go ahead. We've created those squares. And I do apologize if you've never done a cover like this or a wrap if I'm going fast. But you'll be able to go back and stop the video. You're going to wrap it. If you do your album covers this way, and I know a lot of you do because you follow the designers, I'm doing it exactly like 
our album covers. And it does make this simple a lot more simple than the original way. Oh, let me tell you, I am using burgundy. Now remember, I do have plenty of burgundy in the eight and a half by eleven. And actually, I got a whole bunch from the mill today. Oh, it was pretty exciting of the samples from the mill of new colors. Um, the artisan cardstock in the colors are, will be coming back, but right now, eight and a half by eleven. So you still can get burgundy in eight and a half by eleven. And you will love using it for these smaller projects because there's hardly any waste. And I will be showing uh, the new color soon. And I'll be doing more lives from the store. It's just been a matter of trying to get situated and getting our virtual retreat kits out. And finally kind of got our class is situated and you guys are going to be very happy because you know, the whole world has kind of gotten um, used to online presence because we have been online for two years. And even though everybody's wanting in person, it doesn't always work with lifestyles. So I have talked to the designer, especially um, Jan, who's got really fun projects for October and November that she was going to do the store. And we're actually going to bring them to you live instead, but you'll be able to purchase the kits. And if you are near the store, then you're gonna be able to come into the store, watch the video and work at the tables and associate, um, socialize. So that announcement, I'll be telling you more about it when we're not doing a project, but fun things coming. Okay, I've got my two pieces wrapped. Now we need to do these two. And I'm going to take my piece that is not the right piece. To wrap the chipboard, you need a piece that is four and a half. Oh, I don't need to turn it. Four and a half by eight. I'm getting used to my new cutter pillar. And like I said, I like it because you can't really lose things underneath. Look at that. You can find things. I'm liking it. The mat's a little bit long, but I'm, I'm still, it's okay. I'm liking it. Okay. One and a half on this side and one at the top. And we do wrap these almost like we do for an album cover hi sherry how are you this one you're going to wrap and leave the wings just like an album cover okay this one we do wrap different and then you will need your quarter inch score tape for spacing and you'll see why And, oh, we need to, we are going to do something here. We're actually going to, on this edge, I'm going to cut off, it's one and a half, um, I'm going to cut off half of an inch. Oh, yeah. Placement makes that. That's a great placement. I know it makes it so much nicer. So one side is now an inch. One side is one and a half. We need that one and a half. This side, you are going to just totally wrap it closed. Hi, Jennifer. So happy to see you. Um, where do you get the spacers from? Well, Donna, everything that I'm using is sold at countrycraftcreations.com online. If you are local, you can um, get them at our store. 
Yes, it's the 14th, Cheryl. I've posted it a couple of times in the virtual retreat group. Um, we are going to be mailing out, if you are international, we should be getting those international ones out Monday the 7th. The rest will go out on the 14th of November. So we go, we will be sending them UPS. Some of them I know will be sending postal service. So, you know, postal service though might be running a little bit late, but those of you that have requested we use the postal service, we will be using the postal service. That's okay. It's on the group for the, oh, I don't need to do it. It's on the group for the virtual retreat. Okay. I'm just going to push the one side in. This side, we're going to totally wrap. Okay. But we're going to cut out the squares. Oh, hello, Sean. Did I say December 14th? No, yeah, you're right. I apologize. It's not December 14th. <laughs> It is November 14th. It's a remake, Heather, of a recipe holder that I had done on Authentic. What happened was a lot of those videos, when they closed their groups, one of them was actually my group, the Everything Authentic I started, but still the videos were lost. So we're remaking the recipe holder. Or you could put a folio in there because we we really it's a great project at Christmas time and I've had a lot of questions yes Jen it is Christmas now no authentique's been out of business now two years they are gone packed up the warehouse and they're not even in Utah. Whoops. Did I? Yep, that one's fine. Okay. So you have one that looks like this and one that will look like this. Okay. We are going to just go ahead and start with this one. And it won't matter what side. And I'm also doing this now with my covers because you'll see this is a lot easier. This is, this is going to be the front or the back. It doesn't matter. But what you want to do is... You know how we usually hook them like this? This is just so much easier. I fold this in half now. Right over the chipboard. We're going to add our adhesive. Holding that flap to the inside. There's our bare chipboard. It won't matter which one because it's top or bottom. Now, when I place it, you want it to sit just below a little bit. We're going to burnish it really quick and make sure there's no glue. And then I'm going to take my clothespins and let my clothespins hold it. Oh, yeah, it perfectly lines up this way. 
you know, we're always when we when we craft and we're doing things, we find such we find sometimes easier what well, I think is easier ways. But then we share it with you. Okay, we're gonna set that off to dry for a minute. Then I want to take a six inch by three inch piece. And I just want you to score that in half at one and a half. Okay, there goes my camera and I'm not sure why. Let's calm down camera. At one and one half. We're going to go ahead and burnish that one. Now, I'm just barely, on this one, I'm just going to barely take off some of the edge. I know this happened last time. Before I go live again on Monday, I need to check these settings. That will become a hinge, but we're just going to set it aside. Okay, let's grab our box. Now, we do want to add the piece. We want to add it. So this is this is a little bit different, and I'll show you why. I can't keep a hold of anything. Sorry. Hi, hi Rena. When I first did this, okay, it folds flat. It would fold flat. This one will not fold flat the way I did it here. And you might want it to fold flat. So we're going to do it this other way. See, when it's standing on your desk and you want to, that one's too big. Maybe put a little notebook in there or papers or your Christmas recipe cards. And then when you're done, you might want to fold it flat. This will not fold flat. So one way to fix that is we can definitely leave a quarter inch space here. So that's what I'm going to do this time. But I need this to, to hold on to there. So I'm going to add score tape. Now, if you don't care about it folding flat, and you'll see what I mean when we're done, that one won't fold, then you can just go ahead and you would attach, you would attach this piece, and when it opens up, it would be like that. Okay, but it is going to be pretty tight when we put the piece on the inside, just to, to forewarn you. So now I'm just going to add my adhesive on this part. And this is the piece we've wrapped. Now you could also just put your half inch spacer there too. Uh, right up. Now again, this quarter inch is if you want this to fold flat. See the difference? Otherwise it won't because it's going to be too tight. So we're going to help it fold flat a little bit by folding this backwards. And because we have this quarter inch, now you can kind of see. Because when I put the lining on the inside, it's going to be super tight. But this will now give me a fold flat piece. Okay. Now, this flap, go ahead and fold it into the unfinished side of your chip of your chipboard. Yeah. Hi, Diane. My second piece of six by eight and three quarters. Once again, it needs to sit just below. Basically, it's not even with. 
I mean, just a minute amount below the edge of the hinge piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and just add my clothes pins. I'm going to let that dry. And now you need to cut. This is, I did not put this on the cutting guide. So with my 11, eight and a half by 11 inch. Hi, Diane. Where? Yes, these are great. These, these were, we made these. Uh, years ago and they were really great i'm going to cut this two pieces of eight and a half by eleven hi cindy down i just need it to be five and seven eighths wide grab my hi Wendy I needed to grab my poor tape oh well you kind of lay in bed and that's what I think about Jerry isn't that crazy this cardstock is the artisan burgundy and it's eight and a half by eleven and this is the course score tape sheets. I sell those too. So I want to put them in my scoreboard. And I just want to lay. Okay. I wanted to lay it straighter than that, but I didn't. It's late. You, you can use glue, but you don't want to get glue down in the in the fold parts because it does. It's glue. It's wet and it's going to soften it up and it might tear. So that's why I'm doing the score tape sheet, but do get it on a lot straighter than I did. Now I don't, I didn't before either mat the inside of the box because it really does, you don't really see it, but you can put your pattern paper inside there. Now, if you are going to put pattern paper on the inside, you will need to do it before the hinge piece after this is added. And I'm messing this up. I just cut into my paper, but it's okay. And you do need two pieces of eight and a half by 11. No, I mean, uh, Five and seven eighths by eleven. All right, now let me get this on straight this time. Nope, it's not going to happen tonight. Yes, it might ripple if it's wet, for sure. I know it's late for some of you, but thank you for joining. Because I really have missed going live. I thought about it last night, but being Halloween, I didn't know how many of you would be here. Okay, now this one... We are actually going to cut in half on our cutter. I want you to cut it in half. So in half would be five and a five and a half. So we're going to cut it at five and a half. So you will have two pieces. Yeah, we, you know, I was very strict. I said we are only going Good night, Caroline. I said we are only going to give one piece. Okay, the price of candy was outrageous. 
but you have to have it. We gave out 400 pieces. 400. Okay, our first piece is going to go across the center. Now, mine's a little wonky because I cut into it, and this is the sample. So, when I, if I was going to go back over this, I would definitely put pattern paper and cut it straight so I didn't have, you can see how wonky it is. And the best thing to do is to try and just center this, but then our five and a half inch pieces, again, you won't see them, but you will um, be putting pattern paper over them. And I did not cut super straight, so please don't look at my cutting tonight. <laughs> you guys didn't have any either? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we had 400. I know because we were giving out those one pieces of candy and there was 400. And I know my husband, though, the really cute little ones, they did get more than one. There's my half, my quarter inch score tape. Put that down. Then we're going to take our bone folder. And that first piece, uh, first hinge, and then we'll go to our second hinge. Oh, yeah, you only had three. Oh, we have quite a busy neighborhood. Now, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is our quarter inch. The ed oh, the adhesive sheets, they are eight and a half by 11. So these are. They're eight and a half by 11, and I do sell them at countrycraftcreations.com. Or if you are in Utah, you can visit our store in West Haven, Utah, and we have plenty of our score tape sheets. And they are wonderful, and they save your rolls of score tape. Now, I'm going to first fold that over. Okay. I'm going to turn it over, and this is, again, if you want this to lay flat now now you can kind of see it's taking shape there we go see how this would go flat so if you wanted to store it for Christmas and then when I store them flat my other one is in a box I wanted to get it out and show you from before I just have a clip on there then I put it in with my Christmas wreath recipes and stuff okay now you can see it takes shape if you do not put a quarter inch score tape there you will not bend it will not bend and it's going to be pretty tight that's about as far as it'll go but that's okay if you're not planning on putting it away and making it out of just maybe a cute a kitchen paper or maybe you want to do it just for a folio gift then you can do that or a desk okay these are the pieces we cut in half Excuse me and it will overlap and that's just fine it won't be seen and then this is the part where if you're going to do matting with your pattern paper five and seven eighths by eight and five eighths now your hinge will have to sit on top of pattern paper that we created a few minutes ago but you won't see it because it's on the inside. 
now. Let's put this side on. So this, like I said, this is where you're going to want to. Come on, pick. This is where you're going to want to add your pattern paper before the hinge goes on. And make sure it's the correct direction before you put it down. And also here, these are five and seven eighths, but measured. They should be one and a half. And I wouldn't worry about up here. I would just put it on the sides. So I would cut it at one and three eighths by five and seven eighths. Put your pattern paper on. And you're good to go. Now our hinge. We've already scored it. It was at three inches. We scored it one and a half. We've already burnished it. Burnish it well. You want it to be flat. And I only use glue from here now with I only use my score tape on the covers art glitter glue is permanent and also if you're wanting to get your art glitter glue get it ordered because it's getting too cold to ship soon okay okay once that's down let's go ahead and do the second piece again this will sit on top of the pattern paper. There's no other way that I can figure out to do it. Make sure this will fold in. Make sure you have it. Everything's even. So there we go. Push it down. Don't let it slip. Now I'm going to let that dry while we make the pocket. See now with that quarter inch facing, we can fold this flat at our clip here, especially if you're wanting to mount this. Well, you will have, I can't fold this flat, but you'll see. I can't put this one flat because it will break. And you can now put the pocket on this flat, which is very helpful. Your pocket is 10 inches long and 6 inches wide. Okay, you can make this wider. So maybe you want it to be a bigger pocket. You want it to come up higher on your on your your little board here and it's really easy to to mat this don't worry because you'll be able to mat this just fine and so you can even so I wanted to show you okay it will accordion a little bit and actually that's what I wanted I didn't want to put the accordions in because I don't want to lose the squareness but you can bring it up higher if you want a bigger notebook in there. Otherwise, it, mine is 6 by 10. In the scoreboard, we're going to score on three sides. At 1. And 2. The scoreboard's new, so things it's still a little... Um, things don't slide well. One, which I'm glad though. And two. And we'll turn back to the 10 inch side and score at one and two. See right now, I would be looking for my bone folder if I couldn't see it. That's what I love about this transparency. It's so great. Okay, I'm just going to fold it in on all sides right now. Okay. 
And then we're going to do the one inch piece. see our box is going starting to take shape this is the part though you want to mat this if you're going to be matting the front and I did mat the inside you, you can't see it but it makes your box so much stronger and then I did do a double matting I'll give you the measurements now I didn't do it on this one if you don't if you want more of that accordion look don't mat it if you mat it it's going to be nice and strong and you won't have you won't have that accordion so it just depends on what you're looking for so you're going to mat and i would definitely double mat the inside and the outside these are one inch so i would do my first matting at seven eighths let me give you some measurements here so seven eighths my three and seven eighths would be my first matting and then my second matting would be probably um, five eighths by. Let me tell you what the length is here. By three and a half, three and a half. So do your double layering. Just go ahead and measure. Now your front piece is going to be five and seven eighths. My black piece is five and seven eighths by three and three quarters. Then my pretty pattern paper is three and a half by five and a half. And I, you can't see the inside, so don't even worry. Just grab a scrap and do it the first matting size. But do mat if you want it to be nice and heavy and square. The inside, outside of these, these little one inch pieces, okay? So you would do this now. You would mat the big piece. You would mat all of these well, just up here, and then you would, so ignore your corners, mat it on the inside. We are going to put the box together, but because you don't see inside, it won't matter that the tabs show. And like I said, you could also just lay down a piece of lightweight chipboard. You're going to cut it seven eighths by five and seven eighths and put it here and here. Either way, you don't have to mat it. Nobody will see it on the inside. Now, here they would, so do put a piece of pattern paper on top. Okay. The squares. I want you just to cut from the bottom all the way to the top. And then I want you to cut the two bottom squares off. And I want you to miter the inside. And I want you to miter the outside just to that first score line and cut straight across. Well, I don't really want to pull that. Don't miter. Don't miter this. It's a square. If you miter it, you're not going to be happy. So now I want you to cut straight up, keeping those squares. You're going to cut off the bottom two. That helps get rid of any confusion. Hello, Scrapbook Loft. Miter the inside. Miter the outside. But cut straight across on the outside score line. So that it looks like this. So now go ahead and mat. You can even mat this piece. You don't really have to mat these outside pieces. We're going to adhere those on. But you do, well, and you really, no, do not mat them. I'll tell you why. When you slide your pattern paper down into the box, it's too bulky. So do not, do not mat the outside, these inside squares. Mat them if you want it to be nice and heavy. Inside and outside. And we're going to go back 
after you mat everything, go back and reburnish to the inside all of your score lines so they're nice and neat. Okay, I'm going to grab my box, remove my clothespins because I'm going to need them. Now your box is, or your stand is nice and sturdy. Our tabs. This is the outside. For a moment. Okay, so if you had matting in there, you would see the matting here and you would see the matting here on these sides. Remember, no matting here or here. Now we need to put our box together. And you do want to keep everything lined up so that it's square. So we're just going to go slow for a minute because I want it to be square. Okay, once the glue grabs a hold, I'll use my clothespin. Now repeat on this side. And again, just like you're making a box, keep it square. everything's down. Now, if you need your box more flat, You can always add your clothespin there or anywhere. So we're going to add, we're going to add it right to the front. Just add your glue. And once your box has matting on it, it is a lot stronger. And then we want to make sure it's sitting. Side by side, perfectly to the edges. Not too worried about the bottom. But you do want it straight. Okay, see it should be flush. Whoops, still wet. And flush. Then I'm going to take my spacer. And just go along those edges.
let that dry for just a moment and then it's super simple to decorate from here on out i just want to put my lid on my glue maybe Now I've got snoring dogs. <laughs> you guys probably can hear that. Okay. Now, when you lift, when you open this up, you've got a nice stand for in the kitchen. You want to just do your matting, probably uh, five and seven eighths. If you're going to double mat it, double mat it like you would a card. You know, put your eight and seven or your five and seven eighths by probably eight and five eighths. And then put your matting and it excuse me it'll slip it'll slip just nicely down into your box this should already be matted when you put it on so you have a nice strong box and then de decorate the back with your matting and then you can go through a lot of you um saw the pictures on our facebook group and i would love to get one up here to show you because i don't have one decorated but see then you can cut doilies of course this doesn't go you can cut doilies to go on the front, add your cut aparts, and then your recipe cards, or you can make the recipe folio to go in there. I've got lots of those um, on my YouTube channel, so do the designers. So that is how the recipe file box is made. And then as you can see, you can fold it flat, put a clip on it, pop it in the mail, and save the burgundy. It's actually going to go along with the box we just made. Um, the christmas box so won't that be a cute gift to go along with it with some recipe cards so um linda i'm pretty sure linda was the one who wanted the remake um and i'll tag you in this but i hope you guys enjoyed it and i was glad i could get this put together for you tonight so that you can get these made in time for christmas thanks for watching everybody and i'll see you next monday live Bye bye